Recorded Books and RB Digital present Faster, how a Jewish driver, an American heiress, and a legendary car beat Hitler's best. By Neil Baskin. Narrated by Eduardo Ballerini. From William Shakespeare, Henry V. I see you stand like greyhounds in the slips, straining upon the start. Author's note. A terrific adventure awaits, but I must hurry. Mid-morning, heading north on the I-405 from Los Angeles International Airport, I am stuck in a traffic jam. A sea of vehicles of every make surround me. Long-haul semis, boxy sedans, Denali's with tinted windows, Priuses with Uber stickers, black town cars, landscaping trucks, and the occasional zesty convertible. My own rented black GMC Terrain is one of those nondescript compact SUVs that automakers stamp out with all the cookie-cutter variation of a Ford Model T. If parked in a crowded lot, I would fail to pick out my rental without clicking its key fob to trigger the lights. None of us is getting anywhere fast. Ten minutes pass at a standstill, then twenty. According to Google Maps, I have another 58 miles, or one hour 52 minutes, until I reach Oxnard. The line of my route on the screen map looks an ugly red. Surely they will wait for me before they ship the Dilla A145 race car off to London to sit behind a velvet rope in the Victorian Albert Museum. I try not to pound the steering wheel in frustration. The bottleneck ahead finally loosens. Once I veer off onto the I-10 towards Santa Monica, the stop-and-go traffic becomes mostly go. Then I am cruising north on the Pacific Coast Highway. In the distance, there are mostly vistas of ocean and wildflower-covered hillsides. I might make it after all. My GMC is comfortable but unexciting. A rental car obligation. Retractable seats with good lumbar support. Automatic transmission. Apple CarPlay to listen to my latest Spotify favorite, The Lumineers. Past Malibu, I battle with the electronic windows, unable to convince them to remain half open. Instead, I seal myself into the air-conditioned cocoon. No salty breezes for me. At stoplights, the engine shuts off to save gas. It does not ask me for permission. Halfway there, I take a call from my wife in Seattle. She cannot even tell I'm driving. Whatever churns underneath the hood, it is quiet, reasonable, and unflappable. All worthy qualities in a vehicle meant to get one safely from point A to point B. A very different car is being readied for me in Oxnard. It is a reward and capstone after two years of investigation into its long-forgotten history. There was a period, shortly before the outbreak of World War II, when the Della A145 was one of the most noted Grand Prix race cars in the world. Its exploits had equal billing to news stories of peace coming undone in Europe. Huge crowds assembled to watch it compete or to glimpse its shiny V12 engine up close at motor shows. When it first appeared at Montlhery, an autodrome in France, many thought its design peculiar. One critic likened it to a praying mantis rather than a machine built for speed. After the Della A smashed records on the closed oval circuit, sought the million franc prize, and dared to be the car that beat Hitler, the naysayers became adoring admirers. Its owner, its designer and builder, and the driver, who often risked death pushing the Della A to the limit, were heralded as national heroes. Its story began in 1933, when the leader of the New Third Reich made reigning over the Grand Prix one of his first missions. His Silver Arrow race cars, piloted by the ruthlessly indefatigable champion Rudi Karachala, and the blonde-haired, blue-eyed poster boy, Bernd Rosemeyer, stood for more than sporting prowess. They represented the master race, conquering the rest of the world. A Mercedes-Benz victory is a German victory, heralded the Nazi propaganda machine. Hitler aimed to use their success to inspire hundreds of thousands of young men to enlist in the ranks of a motorized army, which its automobile firms, now transitioning into massive industrial machines, would help bring into being. After years of unchecked German triumph, a woman called Lucy O'Reilly Shell decided that something must be done. So she launched her own Grand Prix racing team. A dazzlingly fine driver in her own right, and the only child of a well-heeled American entrepreneur, 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?